Hey everyone, hope you had an amazing holiday this year. I just wanted to share a Christmas present that I got that my uh, wife had uh, purchased for me. It is actually a beer making kit. Included is a mini keg that I can brew everything in and the instructions as well as the ingredients uh, needed to uh, to brew my own beer. So if this is something that would uh, interest you or you want to see the final results, uh, stick around and I'll show you how it's done. All right, so before we get into actually brewing the beer, I wanted to give you some background on which beer kit my wife had purchased for me. So the one I got is the Beer Brow Set. It does advertise on the side that it will only take about 10 minutes to prepare and that it'll take about a week to ferment and brew inside the mini keg. The type of beer that the kit is for is gonna be for a Pilsner. So all the ingredients are gonna be for making a Pilsner style beer. <laughs> So now I have the instruction manual open to the English section and starting with step one. The, the first thing we are going to do is remove the transparent lid from the top of the keg. Keep this on one side, you will need it later. So I have my keg right here and looks like they are talking about this little lid. So we'll go ahead and take that off and put this somewhere else. And step one is done. <laughs> For step two. So verbatim, we're going to fill your keg with the malt extract from the doy bag. Make sure to empty the bag as much as possible. So now we're gonna grab our keg, put it to the side here. We're gonna grab our malt extract and just go ahead and dump it all in the bag. Let's hope this goes well. Now it didn't say anything about shaking or mixing it up, so we're just we're just gonna go for oh my goodness just gonna go for it and it actually yeah it actually kind of fit in the top like like you just saw I'm just gonna pour all that in there get as much of it as we can there we go that's disgusting <laughs> just let the dogs out earlier and one of them just made that same exact sound I feel like the 10 minutes thing makes sense if you've if you've done this before but right now this does not look like a 10 minute endeavor for me. All right, that's about as good as I think we're gonna get. I am now going to go throw this all away. All right, so we have now gotten all our malts into our keg and now we're moving on to step three. <laughs> And away with step three, we're gonna use a measuring jug, fill 400 milliliters of cold water into the keg, then add one liter of boiling water into the keg. Also make sure to sterilize the pressure control valve by pouring boiling water on it. We recommend that you pour boiling water into a suitable bowl. For sterilizing the pressure control valve, I actually have a small bowl that I have set aside to put boiling water in so that I can put that in there and have it sit for a minute or so or however long it says if it says it in the notes. And then I guess for this next part, we're heading to the kitchen. Alrighty, so we are in my kitchen right now and the very first step is going to put 400 milliliters of cold water into the keg. So I don't have any measuring equipment for 400 milliliters, but what I did was convert it into cups. So that's gonna be about 1.69 cups or about a little under a cup and a three quarter of a cup. So let's give it a whirl. While I started putting all the, uh, the ingredients together, I realized that I was going to need a funnel Thankfully, I had some aluminum foil because the only type of funnel I have is for oil and I'm not trying to put that into the keg. So putting in the cold water was probably the, the easiest part. I had actually forgotten to record the, the hot water being put inside of the keg, but I remembered right before I started shaking. So you put the plastic top on the keg, the one that's removable, and you shake the keg around with the hot water, with one liter of hot water and 400 milliliters of cold water inside. Uh, make sure to use oven mitts. I thankfully had some Crown Royal bags to use to kind of prevent my fingers from getting burnt, but the directions also do advise that you, you wear oven mitts because that keg does get very hot. And then the last final steps were really easy. It's just putting uh, 2.8 liters of cold water into the top of the keg. Once you look inside of it, you'll, you'll see that it's pretty full. While I was in the kitchen, we completed steps three, four, and five. And now we are gonna be moving to step six. <laughs> 
We are on step six now, and for step six, we are supposed to add the yeast and the hops into the keg. If your cake contains any additional flavors or wood chips, also add those. So I believe mine did not come with any. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add the yeast and the hops. Here is what that's gonna be looking like. Here's your yeast packet and here's your hops bottle. So it does say to go with the yeast first, but I don't think the order is really gonna matter too much. So I'm just giving it a couple taps so that all of the, uh, all the yeast can fall to the bottom of the packet. So what I'm gonna do is just fold a little, a little tip on this packet here, just like that. Well, you can see a little bend so that I can all just easily fall in here. There we go. I think that's what, all we're gonna get out of that. Also have some cleaning supplies with you because this has gotten a little messier than I was initially intending. And now I'm grabbing the hops and it doesn't say how much to add in. I'm just gonna go with the, the whole bottle. So I feel like otherwise it would have let me know. All right, and the hops have been added. And yeah, so I, I don't have any additional wood flavoring chips or any sort of flavoring at all, I guess, to add to this. Uh, so that's pretty much step six in a nutshell. We are now in step seven, the very last one, and it is now saying to close your keg with the included pressure control valve. So that's going to be this blue and red top, I guess, right here. Do not push the inner part of the valve as it will collapse into the keg. So while you place it on top, do not push the red, the red part of the stopper down, otherwise it will fall into the keg. And then all you're gonna do is stand your keg up vertically so the pressure valve is on top. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. So I had my bowl of water here that was hot uh, to sterilize the stopper in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. And now we're gonna put, go ahead and put it on top of our keg. Boom, and that is it. After reading the notes towards the end of the instructions, it's saying the fermentation process is gonna take approximately five days to complete. Then after that, you're going to stick the keg into the refrigerator standing upright as it is now for two days to condition it. Once the total seven days have been complete, you can then enjoy a beer from your homemade brew kit. All right, everyone, it has been one week later and I cannot tell you how excited I am to try this. This is the first keg I've ever made. Looks like there are four steps required to do before you tap open your keg. The first step is to push the red pin to the side to allow all excess gas to escape. Your second step is to pull the red pin and turn 90 degrees until the pin is locked into place. Your third step is to be breaking the red safety seal. Pull the tap out of the keg. Holding your glass underneath, turn the tap slightly to the left. And your last step, to keep your beer fresher for longer, return the red valve pin to its original position. Alrighty, so if you've made it this far, I appreciate you for sticking around and uh, continuing to watch. So right now we're going to go ahead and open it and we can share this first glass together. For the instructions previously stated, we're going to hit our pressure relief lever or valve and we're going to move it to the side so all the excess gas can escape. Alright, and then step two, we're going to pull the red pin up and twist it. So now it's out. What we're gonna do first is pull the red safety tab. Okay, my mistake. So you pull the tab down and you pull out. Now that the tab is fully out, we're going to turn it to the left. Well, it's looking like a beer, so that's a good start. It smells really good too. So now I got it to the, um, to the level that I'm happy with. All right. My apologies for the jacket inside. I just realized how cold it was because uh, our heater broke. It did get fixed today. Um, however, it's going to take some time for all the, the heaters in the, in the house to get up to temperature, basically. Here's the pour that we got, and I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. I'm honestly really surprised. With this being the first time ever having used one of these for at home brewing. I personally want to get more of the ingredients and make more at home. I would definitely recommend trying one of these. Yeah, I guess you could say I'm a little speechless right now. I, I didn't expect it to turn out this well. And having your own hand in making it, I feel as though it does make it taste a little bit better. I was thinking about playing with some of the ingredients. Once the topper has been taken off at the top, 
I can just give it a good clean rinse out and buy the ingredients by themselves, order them or find a store that, that'll have them and make, make another batch either per the instructions or with my own little twist of it. So if you guys want to see more of that, please let me know in the comments. I want to thank everyone for watching uh, if, you, if you got to this point. And yeah, thank you again for watching.